Hi friends, I'm Olga Kirsch and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to share with you 10 tips regarding painting with watercolor. They're super simple, but I wish I knew them when I just started to paint. And I hope you find them very useful. So let's start. So one tip, use a paper towel or a piece of cloth. It's your best friend when you paint in watercolor because you could remove this excess water from your brush. You never, you never, I will show you a little bit closer. You never goes right into the paper you take a color, drop, touch the paper towel, you remove excess water, and after that you paint. That's how you control the water with watercolor. It's very important. It's, uh, I have a special video about water control, but that's uh, the tip number one. Paper towel. Uh, another nice tip and a uh, very important thing to learn is to paint with the whole body of your brush, not with the tip of the brush. Uh, of course, we use the tip of the brush to paint uh, fine lines, for example, stems. But once we need to paint a leaf, this, this is not a nice thing to do. Let's paint it in a slightly different way. You put your brush on a tip, then you apply pressure on your brush, wiggle, and release the pressure. And then you create really nice artistic uh, leaf. Apply some pressure, release pressure. It's just all about some practice and the same it's with painting petals more pressure less pressure more pressure less pressure more pressure less pressure just like this another trick with watercolor is you either have to be very quick or be very patient <laughs> but not in the middle like half patient uh, i will show you on the example of these small tiny tulips and let's say i want to add extra color green color or just the second layer of the same color to make it more bold. And I could either do it while the paper is completely wet and I just leave the watercolor flow as, as it wants to do. And I could add some details, but only while the paper is wet. On this flower the paper gets a little bit dry it's getting half dry and that's very dangerous moment uh, of course if you are not intended to make these spider wraps the spider wraps for example if you just add a little bit just a little bit of water you will get these spider wraps same if you want to add some extra color you want to correct something sometimes oh uh, there could be some extra shade or something else doesn't matter and then you go on your half dried paper and you get these very evident thick borders these spider webs these blooms so it's um, a little bit far from being artistic so you have to patiently wait until the paper is dry or take a hair dryer 
dry all these and then apply your second layer. These two are very different techniques, but sometimes you need to correct something. You, you want to add some um, extra color. That's completely fine. And uh, watercolor with good paper, it allows you to apply dozens of layers. But every time you need to carefully dry it. So either do it quick and then you get this loose impressionistic idea or patiently wait and apply the second layer. About holding a brush, if you, when, uh, if you want to create something very impressionistic, um, very loose, hold your brush close to this edge and you will get your nice uh, random <laughs> um, brush strokes. But if you need to carefully paint something, for example, you have a petal, rose petal, or let's say iris petal, and you really need to paint uh, the vines, to draw the vines. You do not hold your brush here. Do not hold your brush in the middle. Not even here. You have to hold your brush at the closest point to the hair, to the hair part. And that's how you get the control to your brush and to your watercolor. And especially, especially if you need to paint a lot of fine, tiny details. That's how you control it. I always recommend you to use the shorten, the smaller palette. What you see here, it's a little bit too much. Even my other working palette, it's also a little bit too much, but in principle, it's two palettes. You can't see it, but that's two for different purposes. I always recommend you to have um, about 12 colors in your palette and not to mix everything. I know it's very tempting to have um, to try different colors, but for example, once you set, you decided that for your exact painting, you will need, for example, phthalo green, mm, Windsor red, and mm, let's say ultramarine blue, and maybe neutral tint, or just for example, burnt sienna, burnt sienna. So um, you watch a tutorial and artists recommend you, for example, four colors, or you decided to go with four colors, three colors, take them, physically take them out of the palette. It's very easy to do, usually. Put them aside <laughs> on a piece of paper, <laughs> preferably, and remove your big palette. And that will allow you not to, um, not to mix, not to go with something extra while you are painting. Uh, you would not uh, occasionally uh, go with the other color. And um, you have your small palette right in front of you. It will make your painting much easier, although it m might not sound right now like that at all and i have a special tutorial about setting a watercolor palette you are welcome to watch it and maybe it also will give you some hints another tip sometimes it's very tempting for example i'm painting an iris and it's sometimes very tempting to turn the paper and paint Mm, a petal from top to bottom because that's usually that's very convenient position for our hand but i would strongly recommend you to use your wrist 
because that may be sometimes not very convenient, but that brings the variety. And very important thing, you, you see your picture from, from the real point, because once you turn the picture, your painting, you kind of lose the idea of what you are painting. Difficult to keep in, in mind um, the whole, the big picture. But um, when you turn your wrist and not the paper, you will still see, you clearly see your, um, your painting. Sometimes, uh, especially for me, the most complex part is, is this uh, one. Um, but anyway, I always try to use my wrist and it makes very nice brush strokes. Next tip, think in layers. You can't, in watercolor, you can't apply lighter color on the top of the darker color. That's the trick with watercolor. So, you could first paint something very light. That's why we always start with something very diluted and leave a lot of white areas around. So, we could later on, um, no, normally you wait until it's um, dry, but Anyway, for example, you could apply on the top of this light purple, you could apply a darker purple and even more darker, for example, black one on the top, etc, etc. Uh, think in layers. You can't make this part lighter. There are ways, but it clearly, uh, it will be more complex. So if you want to achieve nice, light, airy feeling of watercolor, think in layers. Do not start too dark. My favorite tip, and in principle, that's my main technique. I use two brushes for one painting. They could be of the same size. Uh, it's important that one brush has color on it. And I paint something with this brush, for example, a petal. And second brush, it's wet brush. It's just a clean and damp brush. And I use it to soften the edges. I always try to keep it clean and I wash it every uh, after every time I touch the paper. Again, one brush is loaded with colors and second one just clean, oops, clean, clean and dump. And I use it to correct, to soften the edges, sometimes to drag out the color from, from the bold part. It's very handy because First of all, it speed up the process. If you have one brush, you have to constantly wash it out, load with the color. And second, it saves your watercolors. So you do not wash out every time, every uh, time you, um, you need to wash your brush. So two brushes, and sometimes it's uh, very handy to have them, for example, in different colors. So you are not mixing them. Black and red, black for colors, red for whites, for example. Uh, you will figure it out what works for you. Another trick when you are painting, make pauses. Take a breath, grab some tea and have a look at your painting through your camera. And that's magic. For some reason, through the camera, you could really see your painting more clearly. You could see whether you go well with uh, composition, what's with the hues, uh, and 
so many details you do not see when you just looking at your at your picture sometimes you need to take a break from your process <laughs> next moment for lazy people <laughs> but not not really for lazy people do not wash your palettes too often I prefer to have really a lot of uh, palettes. It's simple IKEA plates, white plates from IKEA, something for fun. But I have them like maybe 10, maybe 15. And for each and every product, I have my uh, palette. I do not wash it uh, because sometimes I really need exactly this mix of green. Or, for example, I painted a picture with this mix. A few days later, I need to paint something in addition to that picture. I'm just taking my magic plate and painting from it. Super useful. So don't be obsessed with washing your palettes every time. Helpful trick. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm very curious to hear which tips you found the most useful. Uh, maybe there were a few things you have never thought about. I'm looking forward for your feedback. Subscribe my channel and see you next time. Bye-bye.